friends. So in this demo I'll talk about masks and how to control specific parts of your image using other images. Uh, a mask is exactly that, an image that is used to control a specific area of another image. Uh, it's not the same as a mat, which is used as an alpha channel. Uh, sometimes we use those two words interchangeably and you can usually tell from the context what we're actually talking about. Let me illustrate by rebuilding this little setup that I have over here. Uh, I might, I'll touch a little bit on motion graphics. They'll be very cheap motion graphics for the sake of this demo, but we will look at it in the context of creating a little motion graphic. Here we go. So here I have a text node, which you can find just by typing text. Um, put the, I go into the parameters, put whatever I want to type in here. What I'm going to do for this, and oh, whoops, it does have, you know, the basic, uh, basic settings that you would expect to see in anything text related in any platform. Uh, you could either work within this or you could create your own transforms and add them to this node. Um, what I'll do here is Command C, Command B, and duplicate this. I'll have a few different versions. Yep, four is good. And what I'll do here is I'll just choose a different color for each one. So I'll grab a multiply. And once again, these are just black and white pixels. Uh, that's you, You'll learn to think in pixels when you're working in compositing, and especially Nuke. What can you do with white pixels? Well, you can if you multiply them by something, they will become exactly that. Just remember that white represents the value of 1. So if I multiply it by red, it's exactly what I'll get. Um, yeah, this is what I built over here in this demo. So I can just choose different colors for these. These all have different values. I'm going to copy paste those. Save some time since you know what the first one's doing. So you can see here that I have different values plugged in for these. You can choose the colors however you want. And what I'm going to do is create, I want to, let's say I want to do exactly what I just did just now for the display. Let's say I wanted to switch between all of these and make something flashy. Uh, actually, we have something convenient, which is called the switch node. And in the order that you select these, the inputs of the switch node, uh, here I'll select one, hold shift, select the second one, keep holding shift, select the third one, keep holding shift, select the fourth one. And then I'm going to hit tab and type switch to get the switch node. Now they're plugged in in the order that I originally selected them. You'll see here that it starts with zero. The first one is numbered zero instead of one. That's how some programs work. Uh, so you'll get used to that. Uh, so now, if I go to the parameters of the switch node, right now it's on zero, which is the red. If I go to one, switch is to the number one input, and you can see that it gets highlighted. And the same for two, three, four, or two and three. And of course, just like anything else in Nuke, I can actually keyframe this. So if I go over here to frame one, let's say I wanted to start on, on zero, I'll hit set key. And then go to say like, let's say I want it to be quite quick. So I go to frame three and change it to, I don't know, three over there. And I just put different keyframes and different, uh, different values to try and randomize this. Okay, and let's say I don't want to continue doing that for an entire 100 frames. I can go to the curve editor, or I can go to the dope sheet, and I can actually select all these keyframes. Hit Command C to copy, and then move by a few frames, and I uh, hit Command V, paste. And I could even go in here and select different ones to add some variation. And just copy.
copy and paste them. I can even grab all of this and paste it somewhere like here. Let's see what happens. Ah, oh. let's paste it over here. Hold up. Yeah, maybe I can add some some more randomization. There's a there's a there's a trick or there's a there's a small technicality which is when you try to make something look try too hard to make something look like it's naturally random it actually looks like you tried to make it random on purpose and so then it doesn't look <laughs> random in an interesting way so you have to be a little bit clever about how you go about randomizing things and making them feel actually random there we go Uh, there are functions that you can do where you can actually use a randomizer or code that in, but uh, at least with, when working with keyframes, uh, you should be thoughtful about how things feel when they when they are random. Cool. So here we have this amazing logo. Um, it flashes right now. Let's say we want to add a, a certain effect in a certain place. Here's where we get into the masking part. So let's say I want to add a blur effect. Maybe I'll open this up and just make it horizontal. I'll just go by, I mean, sorry, vertical. Just got distracted by the age. Uh, this one over here is horizontal. Uh, this is going by width and height. Um, okay, cool. We can go vertical. That looks cool, right? Let's say I don't want it to be done to the entire thing. So I'll hit tab, roto paint. You get a roto paint node. Um, and over here you can see things that look familiar to you probably from Photoshop. Here I'll grab a curve uh, and I can start to actually draw a curve. And you'll notice that on frame 49, well, you know what, let's do uh, best practices here. Usually it's best to make sure that you're on frame 1 before you create a roto paint. Because it will auto keyframe, you can actually turn off the auto keyframe up here if you want. But here we go. Strong shape. Eh, so let's do it like this. And let's say I want the blur to happen only inside this shape. It's the shape that I'm working with. So over here you'll see mask in the side. And this is part of why when we work in a node tree. We want to make sure that everything is going pretty much straight or at an angle, like into the top of nodes when we build a tree going that way. If you have things going into the side, it's unclear what's going into the mask input or not. So I'll just go ahead and connect the roto paint to the mask. I'm going to hold command and then bend the connection like that just to make this more organized. And now you can see that based on the roto shape that I drew, this is applying the effect only in the area of the actual roto shape. Once again, uh, where white represents one or yes, and black would represent no, do not do this effect. So that's how that works. And you can also blur the actual roto shape if you want to soften that edge. That looks cool, right? Okay. And as I said, this gets keyframed, and just like everything else, you can choose another frame. Um, and change the setting of this. So maybe gradually this gets filled in. And then You know, maybe it does something else. It's totally random. Because this is an amazing logo. Okay, let's see. Not bad, right? I think you get the point. Okay, 
Cool. So what else can we do with Bretto? Let's see. Okay. I think I'm doing it out, right? So what we can do is say, well, you know what? What if we don't want all of this to be visible all the time? Um, I'm going to draw another roto paint and say, you know what? I want this to get revealed somehow, going left to right. draw a box around it and I'll say you know what logo I want you to appear outside this is a so I just hit tab and typed out but really it's a merge node which is set to an operation out instead of over. So you can get there just by typing out. So let's say, okay, logo, I want you to appear outside of this roto shape. It makes sense, right? The roto shape covered the entire area and it's currently outside of the roto shape, which is white, okay? So we'll see what this is going in a sec. If I take this roto shape and then by frame, say 50, this roto shape moves to here. Now it's totally visible. Once again, the concept is that I'm telling this, I'm telling the logo to appear outside of the shape. If the shape is not even overlapping, then it's not going to block the, the logo. So let's watch that. Not bad, right? Uh, let's say we want it to be smoother. So I'll take this roto paint with this roto shape and I'll blur it horizontally. Like that. So that what happens is a bit smoother. And then just to make sure I'll set some blur up there, like 40 pixels or something. There we go. So now let's see what happens. It's blurred quite a bit, so I'll just turn this down to like 100. I'll double click this. One thing that you might notice is that if you don't change this number up here, anything that is in your that is appearing that has been double clicked and appears in your properties panel, if it has any physical manipulation uh, in the viewer window, it's going to stay visible. So, um, for example, if I hit two, if I double click the, uh, the blur, you'll still see even though I'm, I'm manipulating the blur the roto paint controls are still visible. It's because the roto paint window is open here. If I close it, that dis that control disappears. Uh, so I always keep this at one. So I know what I'm using, I know when I'm using it, and I don't need other controls getting in the way. So I'm just gonna double click this for the sake of being able to see the, uh, really what the effect is doing. And you'll see that it gets revealed along with this roto shape. Turn the blur back down so that that's more clear. You can see what gets revealed on the edge. If you blur the edge, then that'll be softer. Yeah. Cool. Let's turn it back up. All right, so that's out. You can also do the same with in. Um, which is pretty, which is just the opposite. All right. Uh, 
uh, just but make sure if you ever change something like that, uh, make sure you change the name of the node so that you don't get confused. All right, cool. So the other thing you can do is combine more than one roto shape. So what I'm going to do is at this keyframe, let's say, I don't know, we wanted to scale this down or something. And let's say I wanted to use another roto shape. This is the roto paint node. Every time you draw a shape, it's called a roto shape. Um, let's see, I'm going to go over here and grab this curve again, and you can you can explore uh, these controls for how you can manipulate like the different points. Like if you click, hold, and drag, it creates a, a more curvy one. Whereas if you just click, uh, it it would create a more angled, a more angular one. And you can manipulate like the what kind of a curve you're going to have based on the kind of point that you created or uh, delete points. But you can easily easily find how to get more detail with these parameters, but for our purposes now, we just need to draw some basic roto shapes. Uh, so I'll put this shape over here, and uh, let's see the blur on this one. I'm just going to turn the, well, I'll leave the blur like that. My second shape, I'll blur by, let's say, 40. Okay. And let's say I want to combine these. The best way to combine roto shapes is I'll select one, select the whole shift, select the other, and I'll use a max. What max does is that when two images overlap, in this case two roto shapes, it will keep the brightest pixel between the two things that are overlapping. Uh, and that's how it determines which pixel to display or what to display in the overlaps just keep the brightest pixel. If you choose min, it will keep the least bright, the, the pixel that is less bright uh, between the overlaps. Um, let me try to show you what I mean there. So here I've maxed these two roto shapes together. And this is especially relevant when uh, ah, yeah, this is not selected very really good. This is uh, There we go. That's why. This is especially relevant when there is a blur. So if I zoom in, there are two blurred shapes, and it needs to choose what to actually display when these pixels overlap. Will it choose, let's say, let me see. Just move this over even more. Okay, let's go to the pixel level. I'm going to move this here so that we can pretty much choose a pixel. So in this pixel, I have this option and I have this option, which are different. And they're, they're overlapping right now, and we need to tell Nuke which one to display when we put these together. So it will choose the brightest one out of the two. That's what happens for every single overlapping pixel. That is max. Uh, typically, this is the best way. Best practices is the best way to combine roto shapes, unless you have a specific reason to do min. Alrighty, and again, this is just a merge node. It's one of the merges operations set to max, but you can type max directly. All right, and of course, you can keyframe both of them separately, however you want. Maybe this is doing some kind of crazy movement or something. That's up to you. All right. Okay. And this is also a chance to look at some of the other uh, default images that you would find in the image tab over here in Nuke. And uh, occasionally they might be useful or good as reference points. 
but for the sake of demo, um, we could take something like the checkerboard. I wonder if we could grade this and make it a lot more contrasty. And then Ah, I don't want this shuffle node. It's going to isolate our channel on this um, so that I have masking mask information. So let's say uh, I want to use the in function now. And let's say that I want to take this and put it inside of this checkerboard for one reason or another. Boom. Uh, so it goes inside the white areas of the checkerboard. Because white means it represents one or yes, whereas black is zero or no, I don't want to see my image in this case. Yeah, so there's uh, the in function. And as you can see, I've done, uh, I've isolated the red channel, um, but you can do that with things that have a lot more color and that are a lot more interesting. So I'm going to actually get rid of this for now. I'll look back at this image. I'm just going to grab this color wheel over here. just as a source image. Uh, this is default in Nuke as well. And let's say, hmm, let's look at this color wheel, and I'm gonna hit a shuffle and grab, let's say, the green channel information. And, um, well, let's see what we have in here. Why not? I'll grab green and, um, Let's say that on my logo, I want to turn up the brightness. I'm going to exaggerate it at 10. But that I only want to do it in a certain area. I could take a certain color channel of another image and use that as a mask to control my main image. So let's see where this is located. I'm just going to scale this for the sake of the demo. And also put it in like a certain area. Okay, so if I disable, enable. So we can see that I've, I've controlled the brightness inside the green channel of this color wheel. Keep in mind, like we don't see the original color wheel at all. We have borrowed and manipulated its green channel and used that as a mask to color correct the original image. So the wheel itself doesn't even matter. The color wheel itself doesn't even matter anymore as a as an image on its own. We just used it to extract channel information that we could manipulate, and you could even do more compositing on this channel to manipulate it even more and keyframe it. Uh, I did a general scale. I could do something crazy like uh, make it more horizontal. Yeah. So there's a uh, and there's another source image of Nuke worth mentioning, which is uh, radial. Just create one of these. You could also create this sort of with the roto shape. Um, you can use this to create vignettes uh, around your image. Um, right. So go ahead and uh, experiment with your amazing logo. Go for it.